Hey guys, Technoman here with a video for you guys. In today's video, we're going to show you guys how to properly set up your iPhone 13 Pro Max, setting up your SIM card, and then activating it all the way to home screen so you can start using your iPhone 13 Pro Max. And the reason why we're doing this video is because the method has changed slightly from previous generation and iPhone 13 Pro Max or any of the newer iPhone 13 lineup will come ship with iOS 15 and things have ch slightly changed and especially if you're using 5G you want to make sure you set up the phone correctly so that you can use 5G and get the best out of your iPhone 13 Pro Max. So let's dive into today's video. As you can see here I have the gold edition of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. As you know the iPhone 13 Pro Max has come in four different colors. You can get a silver graphite, a space, silver graphite, and then of course the new Sierra blue color. And as you can see here, by default, it's going to be something like this in the box when you open it up. And once you do open it up, it's time to go ahead and power on the device. So to power on the device, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be this big button here. This is known as the side button. So you're going to go ahead and press and hold that. Now you're going to press and hold that about five seconds or so, maybe even less. But basically until you see the Apple logo. Once you see the Apple logo, let go of that button. If you hold it for long, it will shut down again. So you don't want to hold it too long. Once you see the Apple logo, that means the phone is ready to go, powered on, and we can start moving on to the next thing. Now you can see that hello message pop up again and there's going to be a bunch of animation. That's iOS 15 as you can see. This is going to be how it should look if the phone is real. Now you want to make sure the phone isn't fake especially if you're buying it from somewhere. There's a video in our channel where we did show you guys how to check a phone is real. Now once it's doing all of that now it's time to go ahead and activate the SIM card or install the SIM card. Now a couple things are going to happen. The SIM card here on the iPhone 13 Pro Max it's going to be on your left hand side. It's going to be right here. So as you can see there's a hole right here right underneath the volume up and down button. That's the SIM tray. Now we want to pop that out and put a SIM card in there. So to do that you're going to take this pamphlet that you got and then open it up and you'll notice here there's a tool in there. Now that tool is known as a SIM ejector tool. It's a really important tool again most of the time you may not have recognized it or care to look at it but it's important because it pops the SIM card tray out. Now if for some reason you didn't have a box and you didn't get a phone in the case you don't have this you can also take a earring piece or a paper clip which works equally as well and you just want to bend that a paper clip if you have to a shape that it can fit in this hole. Now you want to gently push it in, give it a little push and then it will hear a snap and that it will pop up the SIM tray. Now you want to take that SIM tray and two things are going to happen. Either you're going to already have a SIM card in there if you bought the phone from a carrier. In that case leave that SIM card in there and use that SIM card because the SIM technology changes and carriers update their SIM card and you want to make sure you're using the most recent updated SIM card that the carrier provides to take advantage of things like 5G and other enhancements to the SIM technology itself. Now if you don't have a SIM card like here and it's empty here, go ahead and take the SIM card of your existing phone and then you're going to go ahead and take that SIM that you have. Be very gentle with it. You don't want to damage the SIM card and you're going to go ahead and place it on the tray here. The key here is to line it up with that cut edge and then this gold piece or the copper piece facing towards you and that piece right there that corner can indicates that that's how you should be and now it'll sit flat like this and once you have set up like that you're going to go ahead and put it back into the phone again match up that hole right there press it in and then it's going to be flushed against the side again shouldn't be popping out or bumping because if it's popping out uh, water can get into the phone and the iPhone 13 Pro is waterproof so you don't want to compromise any waterproofness that it has. So as you can see here now we're ready to set up. You should already see things like LTE or your carrier pop up if your SIM card is good to go now. For some reason if you get an invalid SIM or SIM card not supported and that means your phone might not be unlocked or not for that carrier. So two things happen with any device. A phone sometimes it's locked or unlocked. What that means is that if it's locked it's only restricted to use specific carrier. Now if it's unlocked you can use any carrier. It's usually unlocked phones are the phones that are best so you can take it anywhere and use any carrier. Now as you can see here we're going to be presented with this menu. So what's going to happen is you're going to see this. You're going to slide it up and that's going to give you that menu and then you're going to select your language, your country and region and once you do that quick start. Now quick start allows you to take your existing device put it next to this one and set up your phone where it can transfer things over. Now you might not do that and just simply click on setup 
manually. Now the next step you get here, it's going to be choosing a network. You need to connect to Wi-Fi or use a Mac or a PC where you download this application known as iTunes, which is free to get. You can go on any browser, Google search it, and you'll find it. And you can do it that way. But for the most people, you can probably connect to a Wi-Fi here. So we're going to go ahead and select our Wi-Fi and put in our Wi-Fi password here. Now that's going to be your Wi-Fi password. So that's why we're just taking it off the screen here. Then hit join. And once you hit join or click up there, it's going to give you this loading. Now, once you join the network, you should see the Wi-Fi signal. Now we're ready to go. And the first screen that we get is the data and privacy. You can read through Apple's data and privacy, but simply we're going to hit continue. Face ID. Now, Face ID is the way that you can unlock your phone, use Apple Pay and other services so that the phone can verify that it's you who's the owner of the phone and uh, Apple ID. So that's why you want to set that up. If you do set it up, you can hit continue. And once you hit continue, you're going to hit that get started. And it's going to ask you to look at the phone's camera, which is right here, like a selfie you would take and move your head around multiple directions so it can get all the angles. For our purposes, we're just hitting cancel and set up later. You can always set this up later in the settings once you set up the phone to the home screen. So that's what we're going to select just for the sake of time. Now, passcode, very important that you put a passcode, especially if you're setting up the phone so your data is protected. So if Face ID doesn't work, you're going to have to enter the passcode. So if you make sure that if you're entering, if you have a pa Face ID, it's going to require a passcode. But in any case, of course, you want to enter a passcode here. It's going to be six digit, or you can simply do four digit, alphanumeric, or even a custom numeric code, whatever you choose it is. For our purposes, again, we're just not going to do that because it's going to keep on asking to do it. So we're just going to simply not choose to do it. You can always come back to the setting again, do it later on. Apps and data now, you want to move your information over. There's a couple ways to do it. If you backed up to the iCloud, meaning all of your stuff is always backing up to iCloud and all that is there, well, you want that information downloaded, you can use that method. Now, if you backed up your old phone using iTunes on a Mac or PC, you can move things over by selecting that option. You can also do what's known as a direct transfer. So if you, again, hold this, your existing iPhone next to this one, this will require the existing phone is on iOS 11.3 or later, basically a, a more updated version so that it can actually do that. So any iPhone 6 and above probably will work. And then you also have the option to move photos, videos, and things like that from your Android device as well. Some apps might not come over. Whatever it's compatible on the iPhone will move over, which if you do this method, you'll download an app which is the move to iOS here, and then it'll give you a code, and then you can put that code in and can start that transfer. Or you can simply go with a clean state and not have any apps or data move over. The next thing is Apple ID. What is Apple ID? Well, Apple ID allows you to use all of Apple services like iCloud to download iCloud App Store so you can download, and then Apple services like FaceTime, iMessage, Music, all of that will require that you have an Apple ID. Now, Apple ID, you might be already using an Apple device. You can use your existing Apple ID. There's no problem using that. Just know that things will sync between your other devices. So if you do use existing one, which most people will do, that's fine. You just put your email and password and you're ready to go. Now, let's say this is the first time you're setting up an iPhone or first time that you are using Apple device. You can create one for free. Now, it's free to do if you set do that, you just click that you don't have one, and then this second option will allow you to do that. And if you forgot your Apple ID pass, or no problem, they can also reset it. And the last method, again, like with the other settings, you can simply set this up later if you're not comfortable right now or want to do it later. You can always do that. And it's just going to give us a warning that if we don't set it up, we can always do it in the settings later. Now the legal stuff, terms and condition, you can have it send it to your email. Disagree, agree, of course, to move forward, you're going to have to hit that agree button. And the next message is keeping your iPhone up to date. So this is all it's saying is that each time there's a new iOS update, because there's all these updates for features, security, and improvements, it'll just automatically update the iOS in the background for you and install those updates. And you're going to hit continue here. That update, you can always turn off those automatic update in the setting. For some reason, it doesn't allow you to do that, but you can hit just continue. iMessage and FaceTime, you want to hit continue. Basically, if anytime someone wants to contact you through your 
Apple ID or phone number that's linked with your Apple ID, they can do that if you enable this. So you're gonna hit continue there. Location services, again, this is gonna be important to use all the location services, apps like Maps and other apps that require you to send location and such. So you wanna enable that, but for our purpose, we're just disabling right now for the moment. And as you can see here, Siri, Siri is just a voice assistant on Apple devices. So you want to set this up. And once you do set it up, it's going to ask you to say like four or five commands so that Siri can recognize your voice. You want to set that up too. We're just going to, you can always set that up later. Screen time is basically allows you to see a report of how much time you're spending on your phone. You can choose to have that or simply not. Depends on your choice. iPhone analytics, what this is saying is that if there's issues with your iPhone, it will send that data or the issue with some kind of bug or something to Apple so they can improve their Apple product. Again, this is a personal preference. I simply choose not to, but you can share that data. There's none, none of that data is going to be a personal data, of course. And then like with any smartphone nowadays, you have the option to do light, dark. You can also have it in the setting where it's light during the day and then dark during the night. So we're just going to go with light. And then zoom versus standard. Now, if you need that extra visibility and need your font to be bigger, apps to be bigger, you want that uh, you want that zoom version. But for the most part, you probably select standard. And finally, we'll get this message: "Welcome to iPhone." We can just simply swipe up, and now we're ready to go ahead and get started with our phone. We're going to start verifying things like to make sure your carrier shows up. As you can see, our carrier showed up. Our network is there. Now we can start simply going into that phone app. Start by dialing in some numbers, hit that call button, and we're all set to go. If you wanna browse the internet, open up Safari, uh, message, if you wanna start messaging someone, hit that message button, click that icon, put in someone's number or contact, and then type in your message, and you are ready to start using uh, iPhone. Now, we mentioned if you need to download apps, you're gonna use this App Store. This is like Google Store if you're an Android user. Simply, you're gonna hit continue here, and select this option that this is where you'll need to either already have apple id or create one for free so you can download any sort of apps that you need that aren't the default apps that are available so hopefully this setup video was helpful for you guys if you guys have any sort of questions anything comment concern or any way to make this video better make sure you guys put a comment in the comment section thanks for watching guys see you guys next time